Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. So we enter your courts with thanksgiving and your gates with praise. We say you are worthy of it all. From our hearts to yours, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing, great are you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Just to you. 
respond to your prayer to be made one with you you satisfy my heart every time you walk in the room you satisfy
Yes, you satisfy. Jesus, the bread of life, that which truly satisfies. So this morning we say we are the ones who taste and see. Jesus, you satisfy. We know you are with us. So our eyes and ears are open and our hearts are open to taste and see that you are good and your love endures forever. We thank you. We pray that you would be with us as we hear your word. In Jesus' name. Thank you guys for leading us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for you are worthy of our praise and our worship. Thank you so much that uh, you allow us to enter in, Lord God, and, and worship your holy throne along with so many around the world, even this morning. We give you glory. You are worthy. You are worthy. Amen. Hey, it's so good to see all of you guys this morning. Um, really Looking forward to uh, sharing a word with you this morning. I just want to start off with uh, something that kind of, I think, defines the season we're in. Basically, any commercial that you've listened to starts off, sounds kind of like this. Hey, we're all in this together, so buy a Subaru. It's just, it's just everybody, that's the saying, isn't it? We're all in this together. I kind of like that saying. I, Pam and I have been uh, taking, doing a lot of takeout orders of local uh, restaurants because we just want to support local businesses. And, and also we've been um, really giving substantial tips. And uh, usually when I give the price of the tip, how much would you like to add to that? I give them a price and they say, oh, well, well thank you. And I respond, we're all in this together. It's a good saying to, to, to add in. The thing is, are we all in this together actually doesn't seem to be what I feel most of the time when I'm actually listening to the rhetoric and the, the questions and the uncertainty and the fact that my concern over here seems to be opposite of your concern over there. Therefore, you must not like me or you hate me over, uh, uh, over here. You know, I'm concerned for my parent who's in the hospital or, or who's in a nursing home. I'm, I'm concerned they might get the virus. So therefore, therefore, Sanctity of life is the only thing that matters. And if you think that your desire to have a job and put money on the table, money, on, money so you can put food on the table, uh, some way that makes those two things apparently antithetical. I have permission to not like you. I have permission to even despise you and dismiss you. See, the fact is, unity, we're all in this together, is not the spirit that's being projected into the atmosphere all the time. Now, I know I've started out very strongly here, but I, I just want to step directly in to the reality of what we have. Last, last week, I said, what's the word of the day? It's not a spoken word. It's underlying. And that is that fear dominates everything that's going on. And a spirit of fear is trying to take control. And so last, last week, we said, you know, as believers, we're not given a spirit of fear. So we, we wanted to break that off. Well, today I want to actually inject something. We broke off a spirit of fear. I want to inject something that the scripture does call us to, and that is real unity. Unity. We're all in this together. Not just because we can say it, but because we as, as believers, as a follower of Jesus who says, I want my kingdom to come, would you be one so that my spirit, my kingdom, my presence can come into this world? And what greater time to have the kingdom of God break into this world than in a time like this. Fear may be the underlying motivator, but what if we together, we came together as believers and said, unity is going to create a platform that is opposite of where fear wants to take rest, wants to take root. And instead, we bring unity. And instead of the world that wants to attack, crush, and, and destroy a word of unity, we actually can bring that together. You know, we're, we're being bombarded all the time with everything and anything that can separate us from each other, from the person on the other side of the aisle, so from our neighbor down the road. 
Unfortunately, from God too. Just think of how much, how quick we are, our spirits are ready to be divisive, to be polarized, to be dismissive of someone else's concerns, to be attacking, and, and personally to take offense or to, to be offended, uh, be offending. Lord, that is not where we want to be. People, that's not where we want to be. Church, that's not where we want to be. Where we want to be right now is we want to be bearers of the kingdom so we can usher in God's goodness into a world in need. That's where we want to be. And the only way we can do that is to be one. Because if he says, you are my body and I am the head, it doesn't work for have a body to be tearing apart. Let's just stay within the body first. We won't even talk about the world and, and, and the brokenness that we hear in the world and that we feel in the world and that is in the world. Let's just take this within the body of Christ, within the body of believers. And we'll start there. Because if we are one, the scripture says that that will demonstrate to the world that you, Lord God, sent your son Jesus. Because it would be so radical when a, when a community of people who aren't otherwise like each other love each other when we're one. This is what the scripture says. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to be one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Makes it pretty clear that we are to be together. We are to be unified. We are to be the one body of Christ. What's interesting is how, how do we do that? How do we become one? Do we just try harder? You know, try really hard. No, I mean really, really hard. Let's just ignore all the things that would otherwise divide us. Well, I do think we engage our minds, but we also want to step into what the Lord is saying. What the, the verses I just read are actually preceded by these verses. This, I'm reading from Ephesians chapter 4. Listen to this. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity, the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And then he goes on, there is only one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. It's a pretty complete, self-contained package of who we are to be as a body of Christ. The body of Christ with those in our own communities and our own families and our own uh, Wellspring Church, other churches, but the body of believers across the state, across the nation, across the world. Because even, a world, even across the world, there is only one body. God knows that he's asking us the impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. And he tells us how to do that. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another. Let's take a look at this for a little bit. What does it mean to be humble? Well, God says, it, be completely humble and gentle. Yeah, he doesn't say, you know, be humble until you just can't take it anymore. Or be humble some. But he says, be completely humble. And humble isn't about being nobody. Humble isn't at all about being nobody. God wants us to be he wants us to be all that he's created us to be. He loves us so much, we are so worthwhile to him that he laid his life down for us. He doesn't say we're nobody. When we're humble, we say we're not at the center. We put God at the center. We say, God, you are the center. You love us so much that you came to us, but I don't put my own life at the center. You're at the center. But God also said, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus answered, love the Lord your God. Put him at the center, but love your neighbor as yourself. So when he says, be completely humble, he's saying, treat your neighbor as yourself. Put his values, his concerns, her needs before yours. Prefer that person. Be completely humble. Be gentle. Not just some, not just until I can't take it anymore, but be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Bearing with one another in love. That's like me saying, putting up with one another in love. <laughs> but that's really what God is saying. I know that it's not always easy, but we bear one another in love. And I'm not just talking about adhering to a law of love. Hey, you I have to love each other, so whether you like it or not, you got to love each other. That's adhering to a law of love. But what if the love is so present 
that we're operating out of that love and it makes it natural to bear one another, one another because we are already in that place of love. Bearing one another in love is what God's desire is for us. And then the next verse. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of, ple- of peace. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. If we are going to be one body, it's because God has one Holy Spirit. And we, we so internalize our, our scriptures of these days that we say, oh, the, the Christ came and died and he, he now lives inside of me. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. And that's true. But he has one body and he has one spirit. That means the spirit that lives inside of me and you is one. So we have to be together as one body so that the spirit has a body to inhabit. We want to make every effort to stay together in unity so that the Holy Spirit can have a body to be resident in. We host the Holy Spirit here on earth. It's an actual reality that God says, you are my body and I desire to bring my Holy Spirit to you, not just a thousand, a million different places and in different bodies of everyone in the world, but how about if we're all together, unified under one spirit? That's why, the, why God could be so strong and say, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. Again, he doesn't say, well, make some effort or make a good effort. Uh, make every effort. That's hard. Because I've made some efforts toward unity. I've uh, made some pretty good efforts. But none of us can say we've made every effort. Why, God? Why do I got to make every effort? Why do I have to make every effort? Because the unity of the Spirit releases the kingdom to you and through you. One Spirit. And the binding agent is peace. Unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. We may disagree, and here's the challenge. And I think here's the insight. We think that if we disagree with someone, then I'm not, I can't be unified with them. If we disagree with someone, I can't make every effort to still be in unity with them. But you know what? Where did we lose the fact that I can disagree with you and I can still love you? I can disagree with you and I can have a different opinion of you or I can see things through a different lens, but I can still make every effort to stay in unity with you. I can still bear with you in love. I can still completely be humble before you because I value you as an individual more than I value, more than the differences between what we may think or how we may view a situation or what, what we may perceive or how we think is the best way to go forward. We need to be able to disagree. We need me to, be, me to be able to just see the world differently or see a situation differently, but say, you know what's greater than that? I'm going to make every effort to value you to value who you are as a brother and sister in Christ, to value who you are as another part of the same body that hosts the same Holy Spirit. And if I can do that, if we can do that, if we can stay together, then we are united and not divided. It's so easy to think that there's a limit to how much I need to give myself to unity. I use, I use this example when I do uh, marriage counseling. So there's such a common understanding that, you know, We have to be 50-50. I bring myself to the table. You bring yourself to the table. 50-50, we meet in the middle, and then we have a good marriage. I can tell you right now, that's not going to be the best marriage. (laughs) Because you know what you have? 50-50, you have half a husband and half a wife. You don't have all. What you want to bring is 100% of a husband and 100% of a wife into a relationship. And in that place, when you've given yourself not to meet halfway, but you've given yourself every effort to be unity, and unity is where you're going to have the blessings that are there. And that's just not within our own human relationships. It's also true of God. God says, I will be your God, and you will be my people. And I'll guarantee you, God does not give us half of who he is. If he gave us half of who he is, he wouldn't have died on the cross for us. He brought himself fully to that relationship, and he says, bring yourself fully. And that's where the blessing will be. 100% of what we have together will be where the blessing is. So when he asks us to walk in unity, he's not asking us to do anything other than than who he is, to fully give himself, fully contribute himself to a relationship for the purpose of unity, because that is where the Holy Spirit resides. How can we, how should we be one with one another? Is to believe the greatest commandment when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God 
with all that you have and love your neighbor as yourself. Place that neighbor in the same place of honor, that same place of preferring them, that same place. Let's make the error toward the extend, extended level of love. How far is enough? Who is my neighbor? How about we say, let's include everybody. Let's make the error on including everybody and extending ourselves fully. So how can we do this? It's a big task. Like I said earlier, let's just try really, really hard. Because if we try really, really hard, we're going to get there. Well, we all know that isn't going to be the case. We, do, we must just keep our eyes on God. We need to keep our hope in God and our eyes on Jesus and our hearts tuned into the Holy Spirit. We need to be so close with God that he allows the transformation, that we allow his transformation to come through us because it is not in our righteousness, but it's in our transformed lives that we become like him. And in that, then we can exhibit the same kind of character he is, the same kind of heart that he has. We can have the same humility that God has. And we can have that same preference of one another, humbling ourselves before each other so that the body can be in unity. The world needs a unified body right now because the world needs the Holy Spirit in this world. And then we can usher in the Holy Spirit by being one. That's the greatest gift we have to the world. Not our opinions, not our perspectives, not even our teachings of who God is, but our, our coming together as one body, which allows the Holy Spirit to inhabit that body and brings the Holy Body into the Holy Spirit into this world. That's the greatest gift we can give this world. That's the greatest hope we have. Because it's the same hope we've received and we allow it to come alive through us into the world around us. This is what it says and how the, how the Lord describes it. Romans chapter two, uh, chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, our mind becoming in line and attuned and in alignment with the Lord God and the Holy Spirit's uh, a Holy Spirit's presence that changes who we are, and then we are able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, His pleasing, His perfect will. Jumping down later, verse 10, it says, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. I like a number of the translations that say, Prefer one another. Prefer one another. No, not, no, uh, go ahead, you go first. I'm going to prefer you. No, go ahead, you, you, you have that. Let me prefer you. I like the word prefer because honor just says, okay, I need to honor you, but I go about my business. Prefer says, no, I step back so that I can give you first place. I can give you my, my full attention. I can give you a place of honor because I'm preferring you. We are transformed by the renewing of our minds but we live that out by preferring our brother and sister in Christ. We live out the transformed life by preferring them. And that's how we find ourselves walking in unity. Walking in unity. We're all in this together. I don't know that we're all in this together. I know as a body of Christ, that's God's highest ideal, that we walk together in unity. Now, here's the reality. We're all guilty of falling short. We're all guilty. We're all guilty of not preferring someone else. We're all guilty of taking our own interests first. We're all guilty. I'm guilty. You're guilty. The world is guilty. But I'm not here to bring guilt. I'm here to receive the conviction of the Holy Spirit that says, in this time, in the season that we're in, let's let the Holy Spirit convict us and go that place where we don't want to necessarily go, where the world and the world's systems and even our own language wants to divide us, our own concerns wants to divide us. Instead, stand in that place of division instead and say, I'm going to prefer you. I'm going to value you. I'm going to bring hope and life by, by valuing who you are. My interactions, my choices, my heart. Personally, and as corporately, we want to be bearers of that unity, because that will surprise the world, and it will invite the kingdom. It will surprise the world, get the attention of the world, and it will invite the kingdom. There's a real battle 
going on right now, folks. There's a real battle. And I think it's, it's important that we not just say we're all just hunkering down and we're sheltering in place and we're doing what we can do. We need to recognize that there's a battle on a very many, many levels. There's a, there's, a, there's a pandemic virus. As we talked about last week, there's a spirit of fear that wants to come in and control. There's a war of words going on. There's conflicts of worldviews. There's political conflicts. But most importantly, there's a division that should never define the body. The division that's in the world, we need to more than ever stand in unity because that is our hope. A real battle exists, but guess what? We know very clearly the battle belongs to the Lord. And the Lord can fight that battle when his body is not torn apart, but when his body is one together. The Lord needs a unified body. He needs a unified army. The one body of Christ, the one army of the Lord. We may, be able to, we may be forced to continue being separated, social distancing, but we are together. We can choose to be together in unity, to prefer one another, to love, to make our relationship impenetrable, to make our relationships impenetrable. Not penetrable by opinion or by discourse, not penetrable by, by worldviews or by thinking that you, assigning motives to someone else about what you, we think they think or why they're doing something, but we can say, no, they are impenetrable. We are going to stand together in unity. More important, it's more important that our relationship be one than for me to be right. It's more important that our relationship be one than for me to convince you. It's more important that our relationship be one than we have the same opinion, the same perspective. But I can value you. I can honor you. I can say you are important to be my brother and sister, my part, your part, together our part in the body of Christ. Many of our differences, honestly, are not opposites. And I think that's the other, the other reason I believe that this is a spirit of divisiveness that, that wants to come in because it's pitting things against each other that aren't and don't need to be pitted against each other. Many of the things that we are divided about, they're not opposites. For instance, lives and livelihoods are not opposite. My desire for the sanctity of life and to preserve those, especially those most vulnerable, and my desire to make sure that I am able to provide for my family do not stand in conflict. They are two things that fight against each other only because we have to hold them in tension. And they're core values that we need to have. They're core values that bring forth life. And at times it feels like they're divided because they want to pull at us. But if we let them pull us apart, then we become divided. But if we stand and, and, and hold them together, they actually make stronger because they are both living together at the same time in tension. They're not opposites, but they are things standing in tension. My concern for the vulnerable in this world, your concern for freedoms are not in tension. I mean, they're not opposites. They stand in tension, but they need to stand together because together they will make us stronger. Torn apart, they will divide and be divisive. Does that make sense? We need to stand in unity. We need to stand together. And many of the things that want to divide us, it's not that we stand, in in uni- stand together in unity in denial of these things. I just think a lot of them are false. A lot of them are false. They want to rip us apart, but there's a place in the Spirit of God where we can stand in the reality of the tensions and say, this is exactly what this kingdom needs. What this world needs is your kingdom. And I can stand in this place fully committed to one another so that the person who can own, the only person who can bring hope, Jesus Christ and his Spirit, will have room and have presence in this world. How do we proceed? Well, we're not all going to agree. I can tell you that. (laughs) We're not all going to agree on opinions, on perspectives, on what we need to do, on what the world needs to do, on who's right and who's wrong, and who's telling the truth and who who is, is not. But we also can't agree because we're made different people. God knows that. Some of us are more cautious. Some of us are more confident. Some of us have great reserves of... uh, of uh, finances, so we're not concerned about finances. Some of us have great reserves of relationships, and so we're not feeling lonely right now, but others of us are. Some of us are compromised in health. Some of us have great reserves of, of great health. 
And if we don't recognize that where we're coming from is different places, then we, we, that will divide us. But if we recognize that Lord God understands each one of our situations and he asks us to be merciful, to do every effort to stand in unity, to humble ourselves completely before each other so that he can bring his kingdom, that's what's going to make room for his kingdom to come. It's not just that there's two sides. It's not just that there's a right and wrong. It's not if you're not for me, you're against me. That's the divisive, divisive spirit. But instead, there's a unifying spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit. And that's who we want to align with. We, as believers, need to align with that. And uh, I want to encourage us to decide to do that now. To decide now, beforehand. I mean, maybe it's not beforehand. We're already in the middle of it. Before, because it's going to continue for a long time. And we need to decide now to commit to one another. So when things continue to want to divide us, we're like, oh no, we've already made the commitment. We're already standing together. We are brothers and sisters, locked together, linked together as one. A few years ago, 2016, we had a year verse. came out of John 15. And many of you will, will recognize uh, this picture, um, that it's, it's, it's the, our year verse of 2016 that we had hanging, that hangs on the wall in the sanctuary in Wellspring. And you'll get back here again soon to see that. But you can see on the screen right now this picture. And on one side it says, abide in me. And the other side it says, love one another. But the imagery that is so powerful in that picture that Lydia Tuttle, one of our own uh, young women in the church, uh, painted and, and, and crafted from this verse of these two people with elbows interlocked, one with another, love one another, abide in me. That as we lock arms together and we stay unified, and we stay unified with each other and with God, then we stand in unity and we have a powerful place for God to bring his kingdom. Locking arms that, that, that mean and that, that, that establish a kingdom that, that is so powerful. God understands the power of unity. So does the enemy. The enemy wants to break us up God says, come together in unity and I will change the world. As we're linking our arms together, maybe right now it seems like a, how can we do that? We're standing in our own living room. We're standing, you're standing on this platform by yourself. How do we link arms? But God is outside of time. God is outside of distance. We may be social distancing, but I just want to do this. I want to just be silly and right now, link arms with you. I want to link my arms with yours right now. And I want to invite you to do that. Because I think in a way, the fact that we're not together and we choose to link arms is going to be even that much more powerful. So I'm going to link my arms right now with one of you on my arms, on my left, and one of you on my right. Oh man, I've got so many pictures in my, my mind right now of the faces of this congregation, of this fellowship, that we are linking arms together interlinked our arms. And I'm going to invite the Lord right now to come and, and interlink not only his arms with our arms, but interlink our hearts. I choose to link my heart with you, Wellspring. I choose to say, we want to be one together because we need to be one together because I need you and you need me. And the God needs us to be together because we don't want to simply be able to say, we're all in this together. We right now, Lord God, before you, we stand together as one. And we focus our minds on the love. Think of the person right now on your left. Think of that person. Prefer that person. Prefer that person right now. How about the person on the right? Maybe it's someone you don't even necessarily spend a lot of time with. Maybe, in fact, you try to avoid Go ahead, link their arms with your arm. Lord, we prefer this person on our left and on our right. Yeah. You know, we need physical touch, and that's going to be coming back soon. I know it will be, because it's the only way for life. Life is made to be in contact. But right now, I believe that there's an opportunity. I believe that there's power flowing right now across everyone watching. I believe that there is an opportunity. There's a powerful unity happening right now. I extend to you, receive it, believe it. And right now, I'm just going to ask another, visualize in your mind, Papa Herb, 
grabbing a hold of every one of us with a bear hug, a huge group hug, and we come under his wings. And you know what that feels like when, pa- when, when Papa Herb hugs us? Your Father in heaven, Papa God, is hugging all of us as well. We stand together. We stand together. We say, God, we, would you forgive us for not making every effort? But Lord, we need you right now, so we are going to make the extra effort not to join with a divisive spirit in this world, but to join with your heart, to unify, to lay down our offenses, to make our, our opinions second to our value of the person making that opinion. To say disagreements will not be dividing us, but instead it will make us stronger. I don't know what all your opinions are. And guess what? You don't know what all my opinions are. We think we know other people's opinions, but I'll guarantee you don't, because you know what? I don't even know what all my own opinions are, let alone if you know my opinions. The world is changing so fast. God is revealing so much. There's so much involved with what's going on. I don't know what I think, but I do know this. I know this, I know this, I know this. We can choose to love the body here at Wellspring. We can choose to say no coronavirus, no opinion about politics, no policy, no differences in our personal experiences or our choices of response will be greater than our commitment to walk in unity. One body, one faith, together with one God and Father. Lord God, we come before you. We ask God that you would lead us in unity, in a commitment. But Lord, we need to commit ourselves because you have already committed yourself to us. We commit ourselves to follow the one Lord, but that also means we commit ourselves to walk in unity one with another. To walk not in a spirit of division, not allowing offense, not allowing differences to separate us, but to be strong together. Lord, it is your kingdom that wants to come right now and bear much fruit. I believe that this still is the year of the Lord's favor. And I stand countercultural to the world's opinion and say this is the year of the Lord's favor, but we are coming into agreement with the body of Christ. Even those we don't agree with, even those we're not sure about, because it is, it is the invitation of the Lord to stand in unity so that the Holy Spirit will come to this world. Lord God, We reject division, and we embrace your oneness. And we thank you that you can release strength to us, and you can release the Holy Spirit to the world as we stand together. May we not find ourselves in this season when the world is so desperate in need and be unwilling to make room for your Holy Spirit to come because we cannot stand together in unity. Instead, Lord, we align ourselves with you, And I say right now, would you release your unity into Wellspring, into every person who's listening, every person who's beyond Wellspring, who's a believer, every person who's beyond Wellspring, who's yet to believe. We we lock our arms so that the Holy Spirit can come into your spirit for the glory of God and for the good of this world. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. I hope that in this past week you have felt freedom in the area of fear. And I pray that in this week ahead, you will find yourself less drawn to that divisive spirit and more at peace, not only with one another, but with the Lord God himself. It is for his glory. But he says, it is my glory to bring my kingdom to this world. So it is for his glory that his world, this world be impacted by his love that we lock our arms. For our sake, for the world's sake, and for the glory of God. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for continuing to believe that the Lord God is good, always good, only good. And the world's hope is his presence in the midst of our lives. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you soon. We love you all. Bless you.
What a powerful word and encouragement and a charge and a challenge from Pastor Wes. That unity in the Lord is going to carry us a lot farther together. Uh, I love that. The link arms together. You know, the enemy can't take on a unified church. And I can't wait till we're together in one place. But it's really about also being one in heart. So thank you, Pastor Wes, for sharing that word. Let us walk in it today. I also want to thank all of you guys uh, who have given your time, your energy, your efforts to sending cards and emails of encouragement uh, to Wellspring Church. And for those, again, who have just tirelessly and faithlessly given of themselves to support the ministry of church, we really just want to say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. I also want to say thank you for your prayers. We feel so upheld by the prayers of the people of Wellspring Church. We want to see God do amazing things in this time, and we just thank you for your prayers that are partnering with God's heart and agenda. Please be praying for us as we are continuing to seek the Lord on how we can reopen as a church. There's a lot of things to consider. There's a lot of things to talk about. But one thing we do know, that whatever we do, we want to be led by the presence and the spirit of the living God. So please keep us in prayer and keep tuned to what's ahead. Thank you for joining this service. We're so encouraged by what God is going to do through these times together. May the word of the Lord continue to penetrate our hearts and our minds for his glory. Amen. Have an amazing day.